G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at a prop. Yeah, it's been a while since I've actually done any prop gameplay, and what do you know, we are going to be featuring a plane once, of course, the server takes its time and loads the game. Well, this particular plane is a little bit strange, because it plays kind of funny, but is extremely powerful because of the way it does. This is the... Wait for it to load. The XP-50. I'm, I'm not going to wait for it to load, because servers are perfect and statistics will tell you that it is a you problem guys remember that that's that's what guys will tell you anyway jokes aside we're going to be having a look at the xp50 and once again while this loads we're going to be talking sort of about this plane it having a funny play style of course you get yourself a nice little uh, i guess interceptor spawn because you have two engines but one of the funny things about this plane is that it climbs really well it's uh really good in that circumstance and because it climbs so well you can get above your opponents very easily now climbing at prop tier and even at jet tier in some circumstances is your bread and butter climbing altitude gives you everything that you need it gives you a sort of storage a little bank account if you will of speed and altitude that you can use later and having two engines and the engines basically being what 10 20 percent of the airframe uh is a bit of an advantage because you have just two big chonkers pulling you through the air and of course with this particular design I don't know what it is it might also be the air spawn you get along with it but you do get a fair altitude advantage and this makes the plane extremely easy to play particularly at prop tier where altitude is quite literally your lifeblood if you can get above your opponent in any engagement it doesn't matter what plane you are flying you are likely going to be having a good time compared to if you didn't. And so what I'm doing here is I'm literally just climbing into the enemies. The aim here for the XP-50 is to just climb in and try and get as many opponents that are either still climbing or are going to climb up to you. And of course, if you're first in the battlefield and you're the highest, you're going to be the one that the enemies focus on. And so whilst they dogfight or try and pitch up losing their energy for you, your allies and your teammates can sort of go in and yoink some kills, which whilst that isn't as great for you, it still gives you a fair good time. And of course, it increases your overall victories. It increases your efficacy in battle. And of course, it makes you a better player because of course, you're helping out your team. You're being a better team player. So you can see from the footage here in the background that we are dealing with a fair few heavy fighters. We have... Two JU-87s, which uh, I'm never going to call bombers. They are always going to be uh, head-on fighters to me, especially the JU-87D5, which is the one that can arm the gun pods. I have several videos on this plane on the channel, and for those of you that haven't been uh, in my around my channel for long, just have a look at all the Stuka videos that I've put up, and my god, I have a blast with this plane. It's, it's great fun, and if anyone is new to the game, go to the G German tree, Grind for the JU-87 D5, which is at about rank 2. Grab the gun pods, unlock them, and you will have an absolute blast. Anyway, our first engagement here is actually going to come fairly early in the match for a prop, and is this BF-110, uh, who's turned a little bit for me, and he's going to turn again to try and get underneath me, but I'm going to spray a little bit, and I get a nice little pilot snipe. Now, I've noticed that there are lots of enemies down below me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly bend around and turn that altitude or that speed back into a little bit of altitude by going after this JU-87 and now I've noticed that he's going to go for a quick head-on don't sight the deep witch to me uh, uh, what have I done don't sight, sight the deep magic to me witch I was there when it was written this JU-87 goes for a little bit of a head-on and of course I'm not having any of that never ever commit to a JU-87 going head-on with you and so what we're going to do is instead commit to a yak going head on. No, not really. He's kind of stalled out. He's not really paying attention. And he's going to be instead paying a pretty hefty repair cost because he uh, wasn't watching out where he was going. And uh, no, no kill stealing from you, Mr. BF109. So what we're going to do is do exactly what the Stuka is bad at, converting energy into altitude. But not only that, I've got myself a little bit of a uh, happy fun time here, but thankfully the Zero has gotten that Focke Wolf 190 off my ass. So, 
analyzing the situation here, we have a D5 Stuka who is definitely not going to be a happy chappy once I send him some 20 mils as a little bit of a, uh, a present. Um, thankfully, I have Amazon Prime and they are coming in a little bit quickly. So I need to put myself into a little bit more altitude. I notice a BF-110 above and a BF-109 closing in very rapidly. I could be a BF-109 F4, but I don't really know at this stage. So I'm going to try and get away from it, try and put myself into a climb. But unfortunately, he's paying a little bit of attention towards me. And so I think I need to try some defensive flying. I'm going to put the plane into a left-hand turn and then go over and then change my course and then try and avoid him again, twiddle my wings a little bit. Just trying my best to maybe make him follow and then stall out. Now notice that I'm trying to keep my wings at 90 degrees to him. It's worked. I pull the full flaps, fall down on him and shear his wing off in a perfect reversal. Oh man, that was 100% satisfying. And of course, if you were in a desperate situation, go for the reversal. But uh, don't try this at home. Speaking of don't try this at home, going head on with a Yak 9T is a bit of a bad idea. I narrowly miss those uh, 37s, and of course, you shouldn't be doing that if you are that close. But um, I wasn't really thinking straight, and of course, it didn't come off with uh, anything else but a couple of hits. And so the Yak is going to do uh, what I would consider the smart thing, and uh, go for a little bit of uh, dive. He's got a couple of enemies behind him, which is myself and uh, this particular P63. I'm pretty sure it's sort of sticking around me like the plague for some reason. I'm not, not quite sure. Maybe he knows me, but uh, he seemed to... I think it was him or the BF109 that was sort of following me around a little bit, and I was like, D -d do you know me? Maybe? Yes? No? Either way, it's okay. The BF109 G4 is about to sort of fly over us, and I was kind of confused, and I thought, well, what's he doing? He's going after the P63, and the P63 is going for a dive. The BF-110 puts himself into a little bit of a shallow dive and then decides that he wants to, I guess, bugger out of there for a little bit, which is kind of the smart thing to do. Because if you're going to be turn fighting two planes, don't do it in a BF-110. Do it in something that is a bit more maneuverable. And uh, quick look at my team there, and it's just they've decided to do a heck and disappear. So not very fun, but you know what? It's okay. We can make the most of this situation. BF-110 is looking pretty juicy, but the Tismar is becoming more and more of a threat as it gets in. And remember, the Tismar has several good guns head-on, and I don't really want to deal with that. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get him to turn as much as possible and waste as much energy as possible. And he's sort of doing it, and then I realize he's going to go head-on. And I really don't like people when they do a late head-on, but that's okay. I've pulled away and I've gone for a vertical and the Tisma is now in a really bad situation. The BF-110 is thoroughly engaged with the P-63 and whilst he's going to come back towards me and give me a little bit of trouble, it's very, very easy to dodge the BF-109, uh, BF-110 because I can just pull so damn hard. I think he's got Shrag Music guns and I think he has gone for that. So I'm going to stick on him while the Tisma destroys the P-63 leaving me in a sticky 2v1 situation. I have run out of 20mm cannons, and the G4 is trying very desperately to get some guns on with the rear gunner. He manages to strike my engine cowling, but doesn't do any damage to the engine itself, which is very, very good for me. Twin engine fighters are pretty bad when you only run them on a single engine. It basically becomes extra dead weight that you don't need. I almost hit a balloon there, which I only realize now that I've gone through the footage again. And of course, I'm hitting my speed limit here, which means that I need to convert my altitude into, or well, my speed into altitude. Once again, I'm going to go for a very aggressive conversion because if I go too far up, then that means that he is going to find a window of opportunity to sneak away, which is exactly what he's trying to do. But because I managed to cut my turn quite short, I am going to be going in and trying my luck. Now, I think the Tismar has a Berenzin, Beren, Berenzin? A, a 12.7. On the, uh, on, on the back, and so I need to be careful that I don't damage my engine any further because I only have two, and like I said, an extra engine that is uh, sort of not working is a bit of dead weight. But thankfully for me, I knock the pilot clean out, giving me an ace, which is very lovely indeed. But, you know, we don't like aces on this channel. Aces are boring, so we're going to be going for the 7k if we can get it. 
we have another P63 to replace the one that came earlier, but this one is a newer, shinier C5 variant, as you can tell because it is a French one. So, what do we do here in this situation? There's an IL-2 and there's a Yak-9, and they're both gaining a little bit of distance, or oh, the Yak is gaining a bit of distance, I'm losing engine power, and I don't want to be fighting over the enemy airfield. Well, I'm going to convert as much as I can into altitude, try and get myself a little bit of an advantage here, and then when I realize that uh, I don't really think that running away is going to work, and as the P-63 comes overhead, as you can hear him, I'm going to go straight towards him. Now, I'm pretty sure he is the Yak-9T, which means that I need to be super careful. He's kind of going for like a kind of sort of head-on, and then decides to nope out of it at the last second. So, I'm going to commit to the Yak-9T. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but the IL-2 has taken off and more than gotten enough distance to get close to engaging me. So I'm going to quickly spray and get a crit on this Yak-9T, and I'm going to start in any second now hearing the IL-2, and there he goes, he's going to start spraying at me, so I'm going to produce as small a profile as I can and pitch right up, because I know he can't pitch up any further because he's basically stalling out at this point, chuck my landing flaps or my takeoff flaps all the way down, and I'm going to overshoot him because I'm just going that fast, picking up that much energy in a dive. The IL-2, once it loses its energy, it really seems to struggle with its speed. Now, this is the IL-2 1942, and so it does not have a rear gunner, which means he is up shit creek without a paddle, and it looks like he is without oil. Uh, so, whilst I'm American and looking for some oil to, uh, to take, he's got nothing else to do but to put his smoke out and say, well, that's GG for me. And that is GG, with a lovely seven kills. Well, not a bad run, to be honest. And as you can see, this plane is more than viable. You just need to be fairly frugal with your shots. You can't be going for planes that, you know, are very far away. You can't be spraying your ammunition. You need to take your shots, take your time, grab your altitude, and use that advantage to its maximum. This thing is a climbing king, and for those of you that don't like climbing well, I'm sorry, this is not for you. But for those of you who are a little bit patient and are willing to learn the guns, be a little bit uh, frugal with your ammunition, you can really make this plane work. It is an absolutely fantastic beast. This particular plane, very, very nice. And if you are grinding through the American props, I would actually recommend it. Decent Silver Lion grinder while you're at it as well. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do us all for today. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments by all means. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.